All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for taking the time today to attend our first ever special webinar presentation with Senior Discovery Tours featuring our guest speaker, Graham Horn. My name is Brianne and I am the branch manager of our London, Ontario office of Senior Discovery Tours. I have had the great pleasure of working for Senior Discovery Tours for the past 17 years. In that time, I've been fortunate enough to have been to six continents, 18 countries, countless cities and villages, and towns. Before we begin, I'd like to let everyone know that you've all been muted to allow for the full enjoyment of this presentation. Uh, there will be a question and answer period at the end of the presentation, uh, where we will be happy to answer any questions should you have any during the presentation. You can uh, submit them into the Q&A section. On our agenda today, we will discuss Senior Discovery Tours as a company and what makes us so exceptional, what our tours include and the options that we offer, our new rewards programs, our updated health and safety regulations, uh, the various types of tours that we offer and the destinations. Uh, we'll hear from our guest speaker, Graham Horn. Uh, he'll be discussing local experiences um, of our Britain tours. And finally, our question and answer period. So our name, Senior Discovery Tours, really reflects our philosophy towards travel, uh, that the world is full of wonderful places to discover. Senior Discovery Tours is the largest Canadian tour operator specializing in fully escorted worldwide group tours for the mature traveler since 1975. Today, our company has six branch offices across Canada. Uh, they are operated out of Montreal, Ottawa, Hamilton, London, Calgary, and Vancouver, as well as our head office located in Toronto. Offering over 200 tours and cruises, we have interesting itineraries, flexible pricing, and great value and quality. We believe that you should be able to relax thoroughly and enjoy your tour. So we take care of all the details, big and small. Just a few things we include are uh, your round trip transportation to and from your home from most Canadian cities, all your airfare and airport taxes, carefully selected accommodation, most of your meals, all tipping, all taxes, insurance for cancellation for all tours, and insurance for cancellation and health while outside Canada. The best part is all of our tours are guaranteed in Canadian funds with all taxes included, so there's absolutely no hidden fees. In addition, uh, some of our inclusions to enhance your tour experience with us are uh, meet and greets at Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, and Vancouver airports to help assist with your check-in experience, fully escorted tours by one of our experienced tour managers, expert local guides providing you with knowledgeable commentary on the history, culture, and customs of the destination that you're visiting, as well as any entry visas into, uh, into those countries where it is required. Offering optional services allows you to curate your own experience in just the way you like. Optional services we offer are air extensions, should you wish to stay longer in the country you are visiting, air upgrades to assist with the comfort of your flying experience, uh, waiting lists for those tours that are already sold out, as well as a roommate matching program. Senior Discovery Tours is excited to launch our new Discovery Rewards program and Blue Sky program. From exclusive travel items to discounts on future tours, this is an exciting way to get more out of every trip you take. Simply put, the more you travel, the higher your rewards. Once you are a Discovery Rewards member, if someone you have referred to us travels, you will both be rewarded with travel discounts. More details and information about these programs will be available on our website in the coming weeks. Another amazing program that we're offering is our Insider Club Benefits. If you are part of a club or association, 
we will offer you 4% commission that will be paid directly back to your club or association. The best part is there's no minimum number of participants required for the benefit. To book a virtual presentation for your club, just please contact us. You can book with confidence and complete peace of mind with our new cancellation policy for 2021. You may now cancel your tour up to 45 days prior to your departure date and senior discovery tours will offer you a full and complete refund. Should senior discovery tours be forced to cancel a tour due to government advisories, you will be issued a refund in full without the worries of any penalties. The health and safety of our clients and staff are of the utmost importance. We are delighted we have been awarded the safe travel stamp by the World Travel and Tourism Council. While on tour, there will be several health and safety measures we adhere to. These include sanitizer, sanitizer available on all coaches. All coaches will be sanitized daily. Air filters on the coaches will refresh coach cabin air every five to 10 minutes. And each of our hotels and restaurants must pass a strict and health and safety requirement. We do anticipate there will be a vaccination certificate necessary for any travel to a foreign country and indeed may even be necessary to board an aircraft. These regulations will be outlined by governing countries. Vaccination against COVID-19 will be required to participate in a senior discovery tour. Proof of this must be submitted to our offices no later than 14 days prior to departure. And we have updated our policy to ensure your coverage for COVID-19 when traveling with us. Next, we'll be looking at some of the incredible tours that we offer. First, we have our Flight Plus Coach Tours. These tours ensure you get the most out of your holiday. These are multi-city tours, which means more hotel changes, but lots of movement to ensure you see more of your destination. Listed here are some of our more popular flight and coach tours. Just as the term suggests, these tours are best suited for those that enjoy staying in one location and exploring its surroundings. These tours are much more leisurely, allowing for more free time to relax and other days to enjoy excursions. These are just a few examples of places we visit with our stay put holidays. Next, we have our two and three center holidays. Focusing on two or three different countries, these tours are excellent if you want to combine a couple of countries, but still have plenty of time to explore. Listed are some of our more popular two and three center holidays. Another vacation type we offer is our classical coach tours. These tours are perfect for those who do not care to travel abroad and wish to have an experience closer to home. All of our bus tour pickups are at predetermined pickup points in Hamilton, Toronto, Whitby, and Kingston. Adventurous travelers who enjoy moving around while taking in incredible scenery love our walking and hiking tours. Imagine yourself walking through quaint French villages, along coastal paths, and by magnificent lakes, all while taking an expert commentary from one of our local guides. Truly a wonderful way to travel. Our rail tours are becoming increasingly popular among our clientele. Offering a completely different perspective and unique way of traveling, it is easy to see why. From the Jacobite to the Glacier Express and the Rocky Mountaineer, there's no shortage of unforgettable scenery on any of these tours. For those wanting more out of their travel experience, then have a look at some of our exotic destinations. You will get more adventure, more in-depth, and more discovery on any one of these tours. These tours are sure to delight and excite anyone ready for an exploration.
And lastly, there's no need to pack and unpack several times to get the most out of your tour. You will have hundreds of activities and amenities at your fingertips, not to mention incredible views. Senior Discovery Tours now offers 30 different cruises with locations all around the world. Some of our more popular cruises are listed here. However, there are several to choose from. We will now be joined by one of our very special guests, uh, one of our holiday leaders in Britain, Graham Horn. Graham is a qualified blue badge guide, the highest guiding qualification you can get in Britain. He's very knowledgeable on various parts of England, Scotland, Wales, and is familiar with many of the locations on our Devon and Cornwall tour. Additionally, he's led some of our railway, waterway, and walking holidays. Today, he's joining us live from Reading, located approximately 60 kilometers west of London, England. Graham will be showing us some of the highlights of these tours with tasters of things that you might expect to see or do. Uh, there will also be an opportunity to ask Graham questions about these places and tours at the end. Hi, Graham. Welcome. Hello, Brian, and thank you very much for that kind introduction. So yes, uh, good to see you all. And uh, wherever you are in Canada, uh, it's a greyish evening here in, in, in southern England, but uh, I'm hopefully going to show you some of the experiences of some of the tours that I know Senior Discovery Tours uh, offer in this country, England, Scotland and Wales. So just a little bit about me. Um, the Blue Badge is the highest qualification for guiding in this country, and I'm pleased to have uh, um, successfully qualified as a Blue Badge guide. Um, I do run my own company as Tours to Order, but in terms of these tours, uh, I'm subcontracted to Senior Discovery Tours. Uh, I have um, not only led some of the tours, but have uh, worked in the planning of some of the ones uh, in my local area. I'm also a leader with HF Holidays, uh, which is uh, a firm that has similar ethos to Senior Discovery Tours in this country. And uh, Senior Discovery Tours uses some of the bases that they have at country houses in different parts of Britain. Um, one or two particular interests of mine, I am, uh, for some reason that is not working. There we are. Um, yes, railways, waterways, countryside, historic buildings, uh, but uh, I just love showing people around uh, different parts of this country. Um, and hiking as well. Uh, I, I can claim at various times to have walked coast to coast across England, separately across Scotland, and also across Wales. So uh, hopefully it gives you a little bit of an idea about me, but uh, what about the tours? Well, as was explained earlier, um, general tours can include things like Devon and Cornwall or Heart of England um, or Wales and Liverpool. I'm going to concentrate on the Devon and Cornwall one uh, today. Um, and that is uh, a coach tour going from place to place uh, and discovering all sorts of different places. I'm going to talk about the themed tours of railways and or waterways. And I'm also going to talk about walking or as you might call them, hiking tours in this country. So Devon and Cornwall, and let me start with that little red circle there is where I'm talking from at this very moment, um, about 60 kilometres west of London, fairly near Heathrow Airport, but you've got the whole of the United Kingdom to the west and the north uh, at your doorstep. And the Devon and Cornwall tour is shown on the map there, and I want to define Devon and Cornwall. Cornwall is the little bit to the bottom left-hand side. Very, very different. It's uh, the old Celtic uh, region of, the, of, um, of Britain, uh, that and Wales and Ireland and parts of Scotland are very much Celtic influences. Cel Cornwall is very different from other parts of the country. Um, the county of Devon, or Devonshire, is the bit between the two red lines, and you get a big contrast between uh, the, the two counties there. Um, it is one of the areas that is favoured by people coming on holiday, going on holiday from this country as well. It's to the southwest, it's warmer, it's very much one of our own holiday destinations. Lovely area of the country. Um, you start in Bath, 
Uh, now, Bath is perhaps most associated both with the Roman baths, and I want to tell you a little story here. The hot springs, which come out of the Roman baths at 45 degrees Celsius, um, they are they were found by um, a, a mythical, possibly king called Bladud, and when he came back from exile, he discovered this area, and he discovered that the pigs were being cured by rolling around in the hot mud springs that they found in the area. And he then discovered that uh, it was uh, providing very good uh, uh, cures for humans as well. And so the springs was, were, were set up, the city of Bath was set up, the Romans came along and developed that and they created their Roman baths. And that's the baths you can see today. You wouldn't want to swim in that water, but you can certainly from a uh, nearby tap, drink some of the uh, mineral water that comes directly from the springs. Um, if you explore Bath as well, it's uh, if you're familiar with Jane Austen, you will know North, uh, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion. Those are her two stories specifically set in Bath. Lovely Georgian architecture from the late 1700s, early 1800s. And if you were one of the people who wanted a house in Bath, in that present, the Royal present, you would buy the frontage. So you would buy two or three bays, but all looked the same. So you had the continuity, but behind that you could do what you wanted. So you would then build your own house to your own tastes and your own specification. If you went round the back of that present, you would see that all of the houses are definitely not of a uniform structure compared with what you can see on the front. And uh, that is what makes Bath really, the Royal Crescent, the circus, all of those magnificent frontages with the glorious views. Um, on the tour, we go to one of the, my favorite cathedrals, Wells Cathedral. I could spend a whole hour just talking about Wells Cathedral. You do visit a couple of other cathedrals as well, Exeter and Winchester on the tour, but just look at the Gothic architecture of Wells Cathedral, those magnificent um, arches and uh, the scissor arch in the middle. Can you see with the two little eyes and it's shaped like a pair of scissors and that's all structural, but isn't it a magnificent structure just to uh, show you what's going on there. And in Bath as well, you get the chance to go around to the um, Bishop's Palace and there's a moat around that. Um, the swans in the moat, they know that if they peck at a bell, which is at a convenient height for their necks, they will be served food. Yeah, right. So if you're lucky there and you can go and see the swans um, having a peck and the bell rings and then somebody will pop out and feed the swans. And Cheddar as well, Cheddar Caves, absolutely magnificent. Uh, so Cheddar, you'll be familiar with Cheddar Cheese. This was where Cheddar Cheese first came from. And in Britain, the Cheddar Cheese is still matured inside the caves. But just look at that rock formation. Look at the stalagmites and the stalactites. And uh, you get a, a lovely tour through all of this natural rock architecture. Absolutely magnificent place to visit. When you're going down, you start going down the North Devon coast and the North Cornish coast, and we come to a little fishing village called Clovelly. Now it is a steep street and it's a cobbled street, but Clovelly doesn't have any traffic. No cars, no vehicles are allowed down the street. And so you've got this magnificent set in time place uh, of the, um, the village itself. You can explore your heart's content. And right down the bottom, you've got the little fishing cove. And then a little bit further along the coast is Port Isaac. Now that might be familiar to some of you if you watch Doc Martin, if you watch the television series with Martin Clunes. Uh, that's Port Wen. Um, the real place is Port Isaac. But I, on the tour, you do actually go and visit and have lunch in one of the pubs that is used in the actual filming. So if you're into these television series, then that's uh, one of the places that you'll really, really love. And St Michael's Mount down on the southwest. Um, now, very much uh, similar to Mont Saint-Michel um, off the coast of uh, Brittany in France, quite a lot smaller. And it's an island at high tide, but it isn't an island at low tide. 
So depending on the state of the tide on the day that you travel, you will either take the boats that you can see there across to the island or that causeway at low tide, and you can walk across to the island. But if you get your timing wrong and have to come back on the boat because the tide has come in, well, I'm told that the boatman would charge you double. I suspect it isn't that case these days, but uh, you don't know, do you? You've just got to uh, um, hope that you're going to be able to get back again. Otherwise, you're marooned there until the next low tide. I'm sure it won't happen, not on a senior discovery tour. Some other th things that you will explore on this tour. Um, this is the Eden Project. Now, this is an old um, quarry. It was quarrying what we call China clay, which is used in things like toothpaste and cosmetics. Uh, but uh, when the quarry was worked out, a gentleman called Tim Smith had this great idea to put these biomes there and the biomes have different um, different climates. So you can go literally from one to the other, from a temperate climate to a desert climate, to a tropical rainforest. And within your experience in half a day, you can explore, experience all of these climate zones in just uh, your short visit there. Half a day at the Eden Project is absolutely a fascinating place. And they do a lot of good work as well in ecology and the issues we've got with climate change and so on. And they're actually doing some uh, experiments specifically within the bubbles, if you like. I think, I think of them as bubbles. Um, and the, the, the tropical uh, bubble, the, tr the, the rainforest bubble, is actually the largest rainforest in the whole world outside a real rainforest. They're huge. Now, if you go to Plymouth, why isn't my little cursor working? Um, we'll get there in the end. It'll come up with a picture of Plymouth. Let me start talking to you about Plymouth whilst the, uh, the pictures, for some reason, don't seem to want to come up. It'll happen. It'll happen all, 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 very, all very suddenly. Um, I can tell you that you're seeing all these beautiful skies and uh, this, this great scenery. Um, so let me tell you about Plymouth. In the First World War, 100 years ago and a little bit more, a lot of Canadians came over to assist us in the, um, the, the fighting. Um, one of the people who came was a gentleman called Harry Colborne. And Harry Colborne brought with him an animal that he called Winnipeg. It was called Winnipeg because that was the town that he came from. And as they were traveling across Canada to get the troop ship to come across, uh, they, um, he, he discovered that there was somebody that was selling a, a small brown bear cub. And he took, he was a vet. And so he took that under his wing and took it all the way to Britain. When the war started, it was decided that it wasn't probably appropriate for a bear cub to go to, uh, to, um, uh, to war. So he gave it to London Zoo. And a few years later, a boy went there with his father and said, that's Pooh. And he called it Pooh, Pooh Bear. And that's how you got the name Winnie the Pooh, because Winnie comes from Winnipeg. And I do not know why the pictures are not moving on. Excuse me a second. Ah, there we are. So that is Plymouth Hoe that I was uh, explaining earlier. That's where all the Canadians arrived. It was also the point that, Ch that Francis Drake um, played bowls before defeating the Spanish Armada. Plymouth itself, fascinating city. Um, and you can look out across Plymouth Hoe and Plymouth Sound and see all the goings on. And then later in the day, you actually get and sample the uh, uh, gin from the oldest gin um, distillery in the area, 1793 it dates from. And then you go to Dartmoor. Now Dartmoor is a great wilderness area. Two things specifically about Dartmoor. Firstly, the Dartmoor ponies, um, very friendly beasts, but they are roaming um, free. So they are, they are owned, but they are free to roam anywhere on Dartmoor. And they, they stay out there in all weathers and breed. And uh, um, they're, they're very, very um, hardy animals. And the other significant thing about Dartmoor is the tors. The tors, what am I talking about? Well, that is the rock structure that you can see there. It's granite, a very hard rock that 
peeps up above the surrounding landscape. And all around Dartmoor, you will see the tops of the hills uh, with these very distinctive rock formations, which we call tours. But to show you how remote it is, um, in the centre of Dartmoor is a, is a place called Cranmere Pool that will take you all day to walk there. And there's no um, other, you have to walk, there's no other way of doing it. And somebody set up a letterbox right by Cranmere Pool. And the idea was that you went to Cranmere Pool and then you could stamp your um, passport, as it were, write your name in the visitor book. And out of that, the whole idea of letterboxing came about with all of these boxes posted all over Dartmoor. And from that, we've got this great thing that everybody or a lot of people do now called geocaching. And it all started here on Dartmoor with the letterbox at Branmere Pool. Not a real letterbox, just a little uh, box with um, a, a stamp and a, and a, box, uh, and a um, visitor book in it. Now, of course, you're gonna need food and drink, aren't you? The picture on the right there is Sally Lund's Tea Rooms in Bath. So when you have some free time in Bath, which you do, uh, do go and take a visit to Sally Lund's, dating from the 1600s, the oldest tea room in Bath. And on the left hand side is another picture of Dartmoor. And one of the lunches is at the Maryvale Inn, which is that white building right there at the bottom of the, of the picture. So you can see how remote Dartmoor is but you get this magnificent experience being in the Maryvale Inn. When you're in Cornwall, you must have Cornish pasties. Now, the Cornish pasty was devised by the tin miners. The tin miners uh, would go down the mine at the beginning of the day. They didn't come back up for lunch. So they were down in the mine all day. They took their lunch and their food with them. But the mining was a dirty business. And also within the tin, you also had other minerals and metals. And one of them was arsenic, which is poisonous. So not a good idea. They came up with this idea of the Cornish pasty, whereby it had a crimped uh, top. And therefore, when the miner ate the pasty, he would hold the crimped top. He would eat the, the nice juicy bit underneath the filling, the mince, the onions, the, 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 the potatoes or whatever at one end and a sweet at the other end. So he had the savory and the sweet in the same pasty. And then the crust was thrown away and the mice in the mine would eat the crust and die of arsenic poisoning. So it was a win-win situation. And also when you're in the West Country, as we call it, Devon and Cornwall, you must have a cream tea. So it's the tea, yes, but it's the scone with the jam and the uh, clotted cream. I mean, it must be clotted cream, not whipped cream. And depending on whether you're in Cornwall or Devon, as to which way you make it. So if you're in Devon, you put the cream on first and you put the jam on top. The one that you can see here is the Cornish version where you put the jam on first and the cream on top. And woe betide you if you're in the county and get it the wrong way round because uh, they'll probably throw you into jail or something like that. You won't be able to get out. And uh, I always tell my guests that, and uh, I haven't lost anybody yet because uh, they're, they're fairly relaxed about it, but uh, there's a great argument always between the Cornish and the Devon about it. Uh, just a few of the places that you'll stay. So these are two ho uh, hotels that are on the Devon and Cornwall tour. Um, and I know Senior Discovery Tours always picks the the, the best hotels in an area. It does vary from time to time. So these are just a couple of examples. And the other types of tours that I'm going to talk about, the specialist tours, walking and railways and so on, um, use the HF Holidays country houses that I referred to earlier. So the, um, the orangey colored stone in the middle picture, the third picture along is Harrington House and Bolton on the Water in the Cotswolds. Uh, the Cotswold Hills, you stay there on some of the walking tours and on the one of the waterways tours. The picture to its left is um, Alt Shellac in Scotland, which is where you stay uh, on the Scottish sail and rail and sail tour. Um, and that used to be owned by the by the uh, Bishop of Argyll and the Isles. So all of these houses have a little, uh, well, more than just a little history to them. 
The one on the extreme left is Dolserai Hall in Mid Wales, and the one on the right is Nodva Hall in Brecon in South Wales. And so all the holidays that I'm going to talk about for the next part, um, you'll be staying at one or other of those places. So Scottish Highlands, um, the best bits are to the north and to the west, and you'll be pleased to know that uh, the rail and sail one is based um, at the house that I just showed you, just south of Fort William, uh, which you can see towards the left of the map there. And the rail holiday does take you along pretty much all of those railway lines down to Oban, across to Malay, across to between Inverness and Carl of La Calche. Um, some of them are on very remote areas like this one. This is uh, the railway across Rannoch Moor to a place called Karua Station, which is the most re remote railway station in the whole country. Um, it wasn't me and it wasn't a senior discovery tour, but I will tell you just a little story of one thing that can go wrong. So the train pulled up at Karua Station and one of the guests decided to get out to take a photograph, leaving his rucksack and his coat on the train. Unfortunately, the train conductor thought that he was getting out and staying out. And so the doors closed and away the train pulled out of the station. Bearing in mind that it's the most remote station, it's nearly 30 miles from the nearest uh, road. Um, fortunately, there is a youth hostel there and the gentleman concerned um, managed to uh, persuade the youth hostel to loan him some money to get back to the start. Uh, but uh, a little bit of a worry and a panic mode from the particular leader, who um, I must say it wasn't me, and touch wood and cross fingers, I have never yet lost a guest. You will be pleased to know. This is perhaps the highlight of that particular tour. It's the steam train, the Jacobite, the Harry Potter, Hogwarts Express, if you like. There it's crossing the Glen Finnan Viaduct on its route from Fort William to Malay. Um, often regarded as one of the most scenic railway journeys in the world. Um, and I've had the privilege of doing it a number of times and I never stop being uh, excited about the whole idea. And on the sail part, you go across from Oban onto the island of Mull, which is one of the inner Hebrides. You can see where the map shows the word Oban and that obscures slightly the island of Mull. It's about a 45 minute um, sail across there and you arrive at this lovely little fishing village called Tobamori and yes that is what one of the Wombles was named after. Do you have Wombles in Canada? I don't know. Anyway um, we have a children's program called the Wombles in this country and Tobamori is one of them. Um, you also of course and I can't possibly show you a picture um, get a trip on the boat on Loch Ness. And with, if you're very, very lucky, you may see Nessie. Uh, but uh, that's why I can't show you the picture. Uh, railroads, or in Wales, uh, they're called the Great Little Trains. And they're previously mineral lines that were bringing the slate down from the uh, hills down to the coast. And because of the geography and the tortuous nature of the lines, they were narrow gauge railways. And these days they've been repurposed as um, visitor um, and tourist attractions. And as you can see, there are rather a lot of them. This map just shows the majority of them. And on that particular tour, you will visit, I think, all but one of those spots on the map. Um, certainly it's, uh, it's an experience. They're all very, very different. But just to give you two examples, this is one of them. This is called the Talachlin Railway. And this was where a gentleman called the Reverend W. Audrey went as a volunteer to help restore the railway. And out of that, he got this idea of writing children's books for uh, about railways. And he created Thomas the Tank Engine. And then you had all the other Gordon the, 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 and, and uh, all the other James and the, the other engines. So that's the Talachlin Railway. The one that is probably most significantly different is the one to the top of the highest mountain in Wales, and that is Snowdon, the Snowdon Mountain Railway. It stands just over a thousand metres high, and there is a railway line to within a few metres of the summit. And there it is. And it's not, it's a rack and pinion railway because it is so steep in places 
that the train would slip back down, that the rack and pinion, a cog railway, takes you all the way up to the top of the mountain. And that little steam engine is actually pushing the carriage up the mountain. Uh, so you can see that there's uh, a, a very um, exciting way of getting up without having to do all the effort and all the walking. And if you get a fine day at the top, it's absolutely glorious. So that just gives you a flavor of the great little trains, as we call them. Um, in terms of waterways, well, there are something like 2,000 miles of canal up and down the country, and this is a fairly typical one. So you will actually have a trip on this boat, which is horse-drawn, which of course was the way to do it when uh, all the boats were being um, used in the Industrial Revolution, because there were no uh, internal combustion engines or anything like that in those days. And the horse here still pulls the boat, it's resting whilst they open the lock to get the, uh, the boat into the lock, uh, but that does the job. And it's as silent as silent walking uh, as the horse walks along the towpath and you're cruising along the waterway. Uh, you go to a place called Stoke Bruin, and this was fairly late. Um, it was still being operated as a commercial waterway fairly recently. Um, I say fairly recently, I'm talking about the 1960s. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the, water, the, the boatmen were all itinerant and their families travelled with them. But there was a lady here who was always looking after them. So the children would probably be put into school for a few days in Stoke Bruin. And Sister Dora also came out and checked on the health of all the boatmen and their families. And so she wasn't a qualified nurse, but nevertheless, she was very much an altruistic person who wanted to make sure that they were all being looked after. And so she lived in the house there with the gray awnings and came out whenever any of the boats passed through just to see how everybody was getting on. A lot of our waterways have been restored over the years by volunteers. And I'm pleased to say that this is actually a restoration site that I have worked on indeed. I gave myself five minutes off from actually bricklaying to come and take that particular photograph. So yes, I can, if you happen to be in the right place, go up to a lock in certain places and say, that bit of brickwork there, I built that. Um, I'm very much just a weekend bricklayer, but it's great uh, being able to, uh, um, to, to be able to assist in the renewal of these waterways that have been in existence for over 200 years. And then we talk about walking and hiking holidays. And again, we have a huge network of footpaths in and around the country. Um, you often see signposts like this. I often call this a scout's armful. Um, you know, when you get scouts badges or guides badges and you, you pin them, you sew them onto your, onto your sleeve. Well, this reminds me of that, you know, you've got a, 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 a badge for all sorts of different activities. Um, often you'll want to wear, be, be wearing sort of substantial boots like this, uh, because our footpaths, I have to say, um, you have to be taking into account the weather um, and it's not always bright and sunny. I'm sorry about that, but it isn't. And there is a little joke. I actually took this picture and I was leading this group. And the little joke goes that I'm often leading a group from the back uh, because I stop and take a picture. And they all walk past me and then I've got to sort of go along. But the great thing about leading from the back is you can see everybody in front of you. And as long as they stop where, you, where, where you've told them to, at the junction, at the signpost, stop, please. It works. And then often you'll arrive of an evening in a village like this. Uh, where there will inevitably be a tea room or a pub um, so you can have soft or hard drinks whilst you're waiting for the coach. And very typically, these holidays, you'll have a choice of three different lengths of walk per day. So it might be um, an easier walk, which is something around about eight or nine kilometres. It will be a medium walk and then it will be a harder walk of around about sort of some 16 to 18 kilometers, something like that. And you can choose which walk you wanted to do each day because you actually have three walking leaders. And two of the landscapes that you'll be walking in, this is the Cotswolds based at Broughton on the Water. Um, and this is just a typical footpath across farmland. And yes, we have this right of access on public rights of way across farmland through gates like that. And, and uh, 
So uh, that's that's the sort of walking you'd be doing there. And also through lovely Cotswold villages. They're absolutely beautiful with their honey colored uh, limestone. And this is not untypical of all of the villages that you walk through in the Cotswolds area. In South Wales, in the Brecon Beacons, it's a little bit different. Um, here is Penavan, which is the highest mountain in that area. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it's a starker landscape, a much more open landscape. Um, and uh, again, the right weather conditions and the views are immense. Um, I was on the top of that mountain at one time and the weather conditions were such that we could see 85 miles. That's over 100 kilometers. But also you will go to the waterfalls region, same area. Um, and that particular waterfall there is um, a, a lovely one because you can actually walk behind that waterfall. Uh, you might get a little bit wet, but you can walk behind it. There is a path behind it. So there we are. That is just a flavor of some of the tours. Um, I could talk for hours about all of these in more detail. Um, I know that we've got a question and answer session in uh, a, a bit later on. I put up there my um, contact details, uh, Tours to Order, as I say, is my company. But nevertheless, um, I do hope that you come over with Senior Discovery and that I can show you some of the places that I absolutely love in this country. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm going to hand back to Brianne. Thanks, Graham. Uh, that was amazing. Um, so now we're going to move on to our question and answer period. Um, I'm going to introduce you to one of our experienced tour managers, Barbara Barty. Uh, she's going to be running the Q&A session. So Barbara is a consummate traveler. Um, she's been to many places that you probably have never even heard of. She has been a tour manager with us for eight years after a 35 year career in television. So she'll be the host of our Q&A session. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Brianne. Hi, Graham. Hello, Barbara. Okay, so I'm gonna start because I got lots of questions. Okay, let's Good. start with let's start with Devon and Cornwall first. Um, what are the what are the average driving times each day between places? That's very good. Um, as, a, as, as guides, we're trained that we really don't want to go more than um, an hour and a half maximum. So during the day, you might be visiting two or three locations. And so often it will be 45 minutes, an hour to somewhere, and then you explore wherever that happens to be. And then you, you go on again. And over the day, you might be doing um, a little bit more. But we would try and set as a rule, absolutely no more than an hour and a half um, maximum. And okay, the, the, the guide will be giving you some, some commentary en route as well. So it's not just sitting on the coach. You will actually be listening and, and hearing other, other stories as you go along. I have a very mundane question to ask. And that is, is it easy to find washrooms en route? Oh, absolutely. Um, in this country, we tend to call them toilets, but uh, we all know the, uh, the, the same thing. Um, and we guides need to find those as well. So the priority, yes, all of the places that you'll be visiting uh, will have washroom facilities, no problem at all. You showed us a beautiful picture of that small town of Clavelli, and you said it was, you know, straight down to the yes. waterway. Um, like how difficult it is, is it actually to get down there, like on a scale of one to 10? Oh, um, well, it's difficult. Some people will just skip down there and skip back. Um, it is a steep hill. Um, they're, they're, they use donkeys to, to bring the, um, the, the, the goods up and down. Um, I'll let you into a little secret. Uh, they have actually got a Land Rover to, uh, um, if you really, really get down to the bottom and find that you can't get back up to the coach again. Uh, but uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to put a figure on it, Barbara, but um, it's, it's a very, very popular place. So they're used to working with, um, with visitors of all ages and, and all ability. <laughs> um, I was also going to say, um, you know, you talked about Cheddar Gorge and Cheddar Cave. And if, for example, I didn't want to go into the caves, how long would I have to wait for the group at the top? And is there a coffee shop? And the bottom line, I guess, would I regret not going? Um, I personally think you would regret not going. Yes, um, absolutely magnificent in there. 
Uh, but if you really, really didn't want to, it's it's not crawling in on your hands and knees. The uh, you know it's it's as big as going into a cathedral uh, for the most part. Um, I think the tour is something like an hour. But if you didn't go in, yes, there are coffee shops. Yes, there are um, shops that will sell you all the things that you need to take home to your uh, to your relatives and friends back home. Um, I also noticed that there's a number of pub dinners on this tour. Are they yes. set menus or is there a choice? It does differ. Um, uh, some are set menus, but even then, if you're a vegetarian, for example, there would always be a vegetarian option. Uh, so, uh, yes, the best thing to do is discuss that uh, with your tour manager and uh, that, that will be um, uh, well catered for. Now, speaking of food, uh, Exeter is known as one of Britain's foodie towns. Um, so why is that? I mean, you never think about Britain being famous for food, um, but we've got, a, we've got a dinner on our own that night. So, you know, what kinds of cuisines um, do we have an option for? Okay, well, you say Britain is not renowned for food, and yes, I can understand that. But if I were to tell you that Britain now has more Michelin stars than France does, um, maybe that gives you an idea. I don't think there's a Michelin star restaurant in Exeter. I'm just trying to think if there is. Um, it'll come back to me. Um, but all sorts of cuisine. So uh, you could have local cuisine or you could have almost literally everything from you know, Thai to Japanese to Italian to French to all the different types of things that you could think of. You could go from um, you could you could you could go to a McDonald's if you really, really wanted to, but nobody's going to do that. Uh, again, what will tend to happen is that the tour manager or your local guide will know the best places and will be able to recommend. So you won't be left entirely on your own. There will, there will inevitably be uh, some suggestions uh, and a whole list of things that you could try and explore. Okay, Graham, so what's so special about this tour? Well, uh, it, the fact that it is, I think, the very most popular one uh, that Senior Discovery Tours does do to, to this country, that says something in itself. Uh, you've got some of the best landscapes. Cornwall and Devon are the places that the Brits go on holiday. Um, and therefore, you have got some, that whole contrast between things like the, uh, the coastal fishing villages, right through to the remoteness of Dartmoor, to the magnificent cathedrals and abbeys. There's so much variety in this holiday. It's just, I've only really done, I, I haven't done justice to it in terms of every single thing that you will see. Fantastic. Okay, we're Good. switching tours now. We're going on to the railways and waterways of Britain. Okay. Oh yes. So uh, you talked a little bit about the houses when you were showing the photographs, but can you explain a little bit more about the accommodation and what it's like in the houses? Yes, certainly. Well, the standard is um, four star hotel type standard. The difference is that in a hotel, a purpose built hotel, you might get all the rooms identical in the country houses. They've been converted from the, the, the previous country houses. So often you will get each room is, is different. But they'll all be en suite. They'll all have um, all the facilities that you would expect from a high class hotel. The dining arrangements are that there is one sitting for dinner and you're all on round tables. And so you'll all mix with each other. Um, and a lot of these uh, places also have extensive grounds. So a nice sunny evening and you can go out after dinner and sit out in the grounds and just enjoy the, uh, the, the when I say the grounds, I mean, you know, the lawns or, um, couple of them have got uh, a swimming pool as well so uh, they're all very very different that's the thing about them I want to go now anyway are, um, are the canals very different or do you are they you know are they very similar uh, canal no the every canal is different I know there's a lot of subtleties but um, yes every can every day you will be on a different canal and have a different experience uh, it might involve a couple of boat trips, but uh, uh, there's always different things to see. So there's, I've just shown pictures of the locks, but on one particular day, you go um, to the mouth of a tunnel. Uh, I think you go in about 50 yards into the tunnel and then come back out again. 
Um, on another day, you go to the National Waterways Museum, which is much, much bigger and tells the whole of the social history of the canals as well as the industrial history. So uh, yes, every day is, uh, is a new experience, even on the canals. Now, is the same guide with the tour the whole entire time? Um, it can vary. Um, on, the, on the waterways and railways one, the last time I did it, I was the local guide for both parts. Sometimes you'll find that one guide does the waterways part and a separate person does the railways part. But generally, for say half the tour, it will be the same local, local guide. And how many nights do we have in each location? Uh, on the waterways and railways one, I think it's, um, I think it's three nights on the water, sorry, four nights on the waterways, or is it three, three or four, um, and then seven nights in the, uh, in North Wales, where you've got all of the railways. So you've just got the two locations, so it's not that, um, that much of a, an unpack, you do have, uh, you do have time to sort of settle in. Okay, now we're moving on to Scotland. And oh, yes. Scot okay, rail and sail. So um, in, I'm going to switch there while we're just on accommodation. You know, how many nights there do we have in each location? Again, um, on the main part, you're in Alt Shellac for seven nights. Um, I think there's two nights in another location. And, and there's always a night where you're traveling to and from the airport. Uh, but uh, the main chunk of the holiday, you're in the same location for seven nights. Okay. Now, I in the tour, there's several days that are at leisure. And will there actually be enough things to do in the vicinity of the hotel, since it looks like the accommodation or the houses are in the middle of nowhere? Well, um, on that particular one, on the Scottish one, you are quite a long way from everywhere. Um, but you've got the grounds of the, 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 the house leading down to the loch, the, the lake. Some people just spend the day in, in, in the area. You can go on local walks or they'll usually arrange uh, transport to get you into the nearest uh, big town, uh, Fort William, um, where you could quite happily spend a day. Uh, okay, if on, on some of the others, on the railway and waterways tour, just going back to that one, um, yes, similarly, there's, there's plenty of uh, places that you can go, either transport can be arranged or you just take the local bus somewhere. Again, the tour manager or the guide uh, we'll have all the information. Okay, now a very boring question. Do we get to have haggis? Oh, you've got to have haggis, haven't you? <laughs> yes, of course. If you're in Scotland, you will have ha you will have haggis, and it will be piped in in the proper traditional way. <laughs> I can't wait. Okay, onward to walking tours. Um, yes, and and we're specifically about the whales and cockerels. Um, and how many hotels are there on that tour? Okay, so it's the two. Um, and I think, again, you spend a week in one and four days in the other, something like that. Uh, and it's Borton on the Water, which is in the Cotswolds. So then you've got um, Brecon, which is in the Brecon Beacons mountain area in South Wales. Okay, now I know that there are other walking groups that are staying at some of the, sa uh, the same hotels that we are. Um, how many people might there be? And do we have a lot of interaction with the other groups? Um, I, I hope that you have a lot of interaction with the other groups. Uh, the, you will probably find that Senior Discovery Tours takes up about half, maybe two thirds of the, the total accommodation. So there will be other guests there who are booked individually from all sorts of different countries. Um, and as I said earlier about the, the round tables at dinner, yes, um, sit and uh, meet new friends as well. Not only your friends from Canada, but uh, the other parts of other parts as well. And then when you go out walking, you'll have a choice of three walks during the day. So it may be that uh, husband wants to go on the harder walk and the wife wants to go on the medium walk or vice versa. Um, and that's absolutely fine. And then you come back and you've, you've met yet more new friends. Now, is there a walk every day? Uh, there are, th there's a choice of three walks every day, except one day at leisure. Um, 
entirely optional. If you decide that you don't want to walk one day, well, you just say, I don't want to walk that day. Uh, so it's entirely up to you. It's your holiday. Um, like how hard is the hardest walk? I mean, there's, there's lots of hills to climb and cliffs and all that sort of stuff. Or... Oh, well, you'll be, you'll be walking, not scrambling. Um, and uh, the, 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 the walks in, in the Cotswolds are generally a bit easier than the walks in the um, in South Wales, uh, but they're all graded so that you have, um, as I say, the choice of three and easier, medium or hard. And um, in terms of length, the hard ones are around about sort of 16, 18 kilo kilometers, something like that, with a gentle up and down in the Cotswolds area, um, maybe one or two little more strenuous things in in, in Wales, but uh, yeah, you 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 judge from the description of the, the leaders give as to which is the right one for you. Um, and how much do we have to carry with us every day as we walk? Uh, um, you you can carry a day sack, which will have a packed lunch in it, probably some waterproofs because uh, British weather, and um, you know any that that's essentially is the the minimum and maximum that you'll need to take. The leader will have a first aid kit. Um, not that we hope that we have to use it, but you that they are all qualified first aiders. Okay, uh, one last question. And that is, um, if you decide, as you said, you can decide that you don't want to walk one day because you've had enough and you're exhausted or whatever, you just want to pause in the action. Um, are there towns that are nearby that, that people can go to? Yes, I, I sort of overlapped a bit with the other holidays. Um, so if you're in Borton on the water, you've got you're you're literally in the town, um, and just a, a short distance taxi or bus ride away, you've got at least three other fascinating towns, including you might have heard of Cheltenham um, and uh, Stowe on the Wold, Borton on the Water, um, Morton in Marsh, North Northley, lots and lots of different places to visit. Um, Brecon, you're right on the edge of the town of Brecon itself. So again, you could spend quite happily a whole day just moseying around, pottering around uh, in, in the town. Oh, Graham, you've been wonderful. I want to go on all of these instantaneously. <laughs> please come, please come. <laughs> I know. Anyway, um, I want to say to our wonderful audience that if you have any questions that we haven't answered or subjects we haven't touched on, don't hesitate to contact us at info at stc.ca. So over to you, Brianne. Thanks. Thanks, Graham. Thanks, Barbara. Uh, so this concludes our presentation for today. Uh, we want to thank all of our loyal customers who've been posting such positive reviews on social media over the past year. Um, we'd like to continue to hear about all your past travels and the memories you have with Senior Discovery Tours. Additionally, if you have any suggestions for future webinars, um, please just let us know. As well, you can follow us on all social media platforms. These addresses are, uh, are located on our website. Um, and lastly, we would just really like to extend our appreciation to all of you for joining us today. Um, please stay tuned for more exciting webinars each month, uh, and we certainly hope to see you soon. Have a great afternoon. Bye, everyone. <laughs>